<laughs> okay, so um, since we have a few people here, I'm uh, Mohammed Miligi. I usually go by uh, Miligi because there's too many Mohammeds out there. And um, I'm a senior consultant at 3 I also run the NG Sydney user group. That's the active user group for um, AngularJS because there's another one that just did over a year or something. And um, I also have a newsletter on um, Gurstow.net for everything web development related, like from AngularJS to uh, Polymer and Web Components. And today uh, we're going to talk about two things, Web Components and Polymer. Um, most likely you just came for Polymer. I don't know how many of you even know what Polymer is. Would you go show of hands? Okay, cool. Um, so. I thought that we can't understand Polymer without understanding Web Components because um, all words with no meanings, Polymer is a framework for Web Components, so what are Web Components? So uh, Web Components are um, just like HTML5, it's not one thing, it's a combination of so many things that achieve um, several purposes. For, uh, for Web Components what we really achieve is um, custom elements. So the idea is that you would be able to um, get a map or a calendar or anything and just uh, have a custom element that represents this instead of, for example, if you are doing uh, a pop-up in, um, in Bootstrap or something, you'd have this div, soap div, inside div, inside div, and, and it's quite hard. But to achieve this, it, it has um, a few very interesting features. One of them is that you can, um, you can include HTML files in a similar way that you include JavaScript or um, CSS files and so if, if you have a custom element that's really complex you probably have um, some HTML template, you have probably have um, some CSS and JavaScript note, and it would be nice to be able to include all of this in one thing and of course you also need um, a template so right now in in, uh, in AngularJS in uh, Knockout, in React, in Amber, pretty much every framework out there has its own template language. So right now we have a native template language in, in the browser. Um, so we will get to see this. And we also get maybe the, the most important and, and like the best feature ever, which is um, Shadow DOM. What Shadow DOM means is that you get some HTML that's completely separate from your document. It doesn't get affected by any CSS unless you um, do extra effort to target it. Which means that um, any component right now doesn't need to worry about any CSS that exists in the page or anything like that. It can be completely separate. And since I'm just talking talk without any code, that's probably too long and you're bored already, so let's get into <laughs> this. So in order to show you uh, what Web components um, are like. This is a very simple example. This is a very simple HTML document. There's really nothing in here except um, since some of the features or most of the features we are talking about are not in all browsers yet. There is a polyfill library for it that the Polymer team made, and I'll. I'll it's not exactly true, but I'll, I'll explain later. Um, since I'll be running this in the latest Chrome, which has all Web Component support, I don't really need that. Also, um, what we want is we want to include a world map, and we want to allow us to select multiple um, areas in, in this map, and I want to do it with just a single line. And to be able to do this, I can take all the resources of the map in, in a single HTML file with just um, a link select. So I'll go ahead and run this file and you see I got my lovely map and I can select multiple areas and it, it it just works like you can imagine that there is so much to get this working but from from the code it was just um, a single line really once I um, imported or included the file let's try to see how this looks in, in the DOM In, in inside the DOM, what we get is we get um, one package, and this is our our element. And once we see this, we can like if, if we are browsing a very large document that has several um, components, we we will all see them just like that. Like we you know we we don't really uh, worry about all the details as as we go through. So the idea is that your HTML document will will have. 
um, components that actually make sense. Um, but if we really want to go into the uh, details and see how this map was made, we open this thing called sh shadow root and it's it's called like that to make sure you know, like it's telling you this is completely separate from your document. This is different HTML. <coughs> you don't even need to see to worry about it. But if you're really interested in how many things are on there and all the crap that's making this, you can you can you know, just go ahead. And to make one of these yourselves, I have a assembled demo in here. Let me show you what it does first. So now we, we just want to loot some HTML from the page and loot some HTML from a different file and even start using templates with this. And I'll, I'll talk about why um, all this stuff is nice. So um, right now I have still assemble HTML. This is the thing that came from, from the page, very, very simple. And now I have a custom element and this custom element was simply defined in a different file. Before we go into um, defining the, um, the templates and stuff, I'll just talk about how the um, HTML import works. So when you import an HTML file, a few interesting things happen um, that make it much better than if you're loading a template in uh, like script with unknown type so that you tell the browser not read it or if you God forbid need to worry about i6 or something and you have to make it as a div with display none and all these weird things. What, what you get is uh, whenever you're including an HTML file, the HTML gets loaded in, in this file. If there are any references like scripts or um, link references to other CSS files or even HTML files, they all get loaded recursively. If the same file is being requested multiple times, it only gets um, like the browser only asks for it once. And once this happens, you, you get the HTML and you can access it, but it doesn't get included in your document by default. On the, on the other hand, any script tag inside the, the file that you imported gets executed. And this allows you, like, it gives you the power of, you know, executing any code that you want without really affecting um, the page. So in here, what I'm doing is I'm just having this um, H1. And right now, um, I'm adding the, the HTML by myself. So it's a completely different document for, um, for the imported file. And th that's why, like, if I, 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 even if you do um, document or query selector or query selector or, or you, you look for any elements inside the main document, you won't get it. You have to get it through the, the particular document and then um, if you really want to append the HTML, you can append it with, with JavaScript. This isn't very helpful in, in itself, and that's why um, using custom elements and templates starts to, um, to make sense. So right now, in, in the other HTML import, I have um, a template. And uh, the template is very interesting because you can do um, all sorts of things inside it. You can even do um, HTML and boards, you can do styles, you can do scripts. And you can even target, if the template is used in, in a custom element, you can target this element itself. So going back to the HTML file, when I do this altnet demo, I do get this um, this border automatically, although it's applied to the um, the template itself. So you can apply stuff to um, to the template, like any element inside the template, or even the element that's that's, that's used to contain this um, template. And for for this, we are using like there, there is a special API for actually reading from um, the template. And what what we'd be interested in, in in this code, if you can read it, is this thing called create shadow root. So create shadow root means uh, it gives us this shadow root element that, that we saw and it's completely separate from the um, HTML file. So um, what I 
I think maybe a few of you haven't noticed is that in the main document I have H1 uh, with color red but inside the template I have here with H1 green if I even take this away and I go refresh in here it didn't get the red right and that's because it's completely um, separate from <coughs> from the document and it doesn't get the um, the normal styles and so this is very useful if you are building any UI component and you just don't want the CSS to screw you up however um, it's 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 a bit like it can be a bit tough as well and uh, the ABI is not super friendly with all this object create and stuff um, so what's what's happening in here is that I'm defining an object and I'm saying that the prototype of this object would be the HTML element prototype so I'm able to add different properties and uh, handle different events going in there so this one gets called once um, I create um, a, a custom element from, from this and then I use a special register element thing so that I, I tell it that uh, there is a new custom element and you might be asking why do I even need to do this now like in browsers if you write any custom element like you do in uh, AngularJS or whatever the browser will just render them f fine right so what this gives me is a few interesting things like being able to have an ABI for my custom element so without having to wrap it in an, an angular element or in react something or whatever just natively with the DOM you can call events on, on this, uh, sorry, call methods and, re and respond to events and and that's all because I, I have the prototype that's defined it. Actually th this method returns um, another prototype that I can use to have another element that inherits from my element so we can have like even um, inheritance in custom elements as well so I can base this off h1 or off table or off whatever. Also another interesting thing about template is that you can use it anywhere and by this I mean for example inside table you, uh, you can have table tr and then instead of sorry uh, table um, tbody and instead of tr you just have template and that's completely legal um, HTML. So that's that's what we get from the, um, the native features in, uh, um, in uh, and that's what makes web component is is uh, the shadow root is HTML imports it's um, the ABI for for custom elements it's templates. However, um, going with this, there are a few problems. The ABI can be um, a bit tough at times. It's not very declarative, and also it's not supported everywhere. So um, uh, Polymer, what it does is it gives um, cross browser support for uh, most of these features and some of them are really tricky to uh, uh, body fill like um, shadow DOM for example to make sure the CSS is completely different from everything it can be uh, quite tough and on top of that it gives you some very interesting features to work with uh, web components like data binding for example similar to what you'd have in um, all the MV star frameworks and then building on that they have uh, a very interesting philosophy where they say okay everything will be a custom element even if you want to do uh, an Ajax request you can have an Ajax element and because an element can have its, its own ABI you can say okay Ajax go get um, fr data from your, this URL and you can re respond to um, events and interact with it so um, if you um, I'm a bit reflecting on Angular because that's, that's where I, I come from um, so in, in Angular, for example, we usually have either directive for UI components or services for logic components. In, in, in the world of Polymer, everything is just an element. And that's, that's very interesting because even um, stuff that's not created by Polymer, they can interact with each other because um, at the end of the day, you are dealing with native DOM ABIs, except that you created the ABI. This is quite different from... Um, we, we actually used to have this with jQuery where um, like if you wrap everything inside jQuery then you can have jQuery plugins uh, and stuff like that but now we're getting this in in the DOM itself 
Uh, we also have uh, a, a big Bolimer library that provides um, things like tabs and headers and accordions and models and sort of stuff that you'd have with uh, Bootstrap. Uh, I personally am not exactly as interested in this as much as I'm in interested in the way they make it easier to write um, web components because these elements like maybe you won't, you won't use them but I think in five years from now given that web components are standard and are native and are starting to get support in browsers I think we will all be writing web components I don't know which framework I don't know if you're going to use Polymer or not so Polymer is, is just one framework from, from Google and there is another framework called Xtang and maybe there will be a third one that will win I don't know but for sure you know we're going to be using web components and that's that's also one of the beauty of web components because on the service everything can interact with each other so um, too much talking again which means demo time again and right now there um, as I said there are a few uh, different component streets there is the the bully fill and the polyfill is now uh, becoming its own separate polyfill and, and um, Google are working with Mozilla on it so it's, it's good that they combined effort instead of just fighting and having inconsistencies between um, the different polyfills and the native behaviors as well. And then there is the, the framework itself. And then they, they, they have two kinds of um, element libraries. One of them is um, like the main elements that they think everyone is going to use and they have this paper um, elements as well which are um, some elements that implement the Google um, material layout they look a bit weird and uh, I'm, I'm showing here so this is the uh, uh, polymer site so you can go to elements and see all the, the elements they, they support Going to the core elements, you see things like transitions, things like Ajax itself. So Ajax itself just, uh, as I mentioned, just just an element. But um, they they actually go a bit farther than the like what what is a standard and what is you are sure to use. And they go with things like collapse expand. You might want your own. Um, thing for for this one and uh, and they also go with input and stuff like that but they go a bit farther with uh, with the paper elements so they have their their own buttons and their own styles that you might agree with or might might, might not uh, so going with that Uh, yep. Okay. So here's an example of using the um, the polymer elements. So this thing is is uh, a template thing. You you can see all the fancy colors and you can see the size of the header and all this sort of stuff. So this these are things that you might not uh, be sure that you want to use or not. And if you look at how this this file is is created you'll find that it's not really hard to uh, to navigate through it so there's a bunch of um, CSS in here but once you get like for example here is a toolbar with some tabs that's it for all these effects and then okay there is just a post list you know um, you can interact with the elements as we said so for example in here is um, setting which which tab based on click and stuff like that, or like what what to show and what to hide based on tab selection, and it's it's, it's very very simple. To create this stuff on uh, by your own, by yourself, it's also not hard. So going back here to the file I was showing you, in fact, I did this just to demonstrate the different parts of um, Polymer, but I can easily remove everything in here, and um, and go with just the the last import and that's so I, I can like do something like that and that's because they go recursively so bibber elements include core elements which include the main 
Polymer framework and everything that just um, goes automatically. I'll keep it just because I can't risk uh, demo failure now. Check it. I tried it, but yeah. And uh, you can also, of course, have your own um, uh, HTML imports. So now I'm doing something not as fancy as um, what we saw, just a few cards like this. And of course, you get the um, data binding thing. So even here, I say, go stop newsletter sign up now you see the link changes in here and to, to make this was as easy as you would do it in, in um, any framework you would know so the whew, now that's what I haven't tried which is removing commented code so I actually had so much code in here but then I thought okay you know what this is this can be just an element so what I'm doing is, I defined an element, and that's how you define an element. You just say, okay, I have a Polymer element element. So even when you when, when you make custom elements in Polymer, it's, it's, it's just defining custom element in itself is an element. So say, okay, I want to define this um, alt Polymer thing. And you can say, okay, I want, to I want to provide, you remember when we talked about you have to have a prototype. That's, so you go with this ABI, you just call Polymer and you give it the, the prototype that, that you want. And then you just use it like that. Of course, I could have used this in a, in a different um, HTML import or something. I just wanted to, sh to show it in here. So um, each element would consist of a template and a script. You can also um, um, use it without a script and uh, I'll show that later, but typically you're doing something like custom enough that you also want to do some styles. So in here I have um, Kurajax and that's just an element that contains uh, the data I want to hook up to. And then I have this style and this is how you would access elements that are in the Shadow DOM. So although by default you cannot go to the Shadow DOM to, to style it, but if you want a theme or something like that, if you want uh, like uh, one UI for your entire site, you definitely want to access all, all your components. So that's, that's how you would do it. And that's because this paper shadow thing, which is um, this box, like each, each, each box of this, um, it's, it is inside another element, inside another template, I had to use this special selector. And, and that's native, that's not uh, that's not Polymer, except of course Polymer will bully fit it for you when uh, when there's no native support. And then you start seeing a template, and uh, if you know something like Angular, this must be very very familiar with uh, ng repeat. Ah, sorry, I mean the repeat thing in there. It's it's very uh, um, similar, you can tell, and you have the usual mustache stuff and everything. And you can pass data through attributes or even through the um, um, ABIs as well. So what I do in here is on on ready event, I say okay, um, I will use some Polymer sugar, and this is the framework part of Polymer. And just to access, this is like um, shortcut for document to get element by ID. And I just get this, and it looks nice, quick. And then I say okay, I want to listen to a particular event coming from the Ajax and I just get the data in here and once I, I, I'm done with my you know settings and preparation I, I say okay go and make the request I, you can also uh, make the request happen when the page loads automatically so that you don't have to write um, a script to do it you, so you get this flexibility in, in all the components and going with that uh, my, my file is, uh, my, my data file is also like that symbol, nothing really to impress about in here. But here is my um, link card. So this is each of uh, these boxes is a link card. And it doesn't need a script. So that's why I say, yeah, no script. That's, that's all fine. Um, and there are different ways to interact between components or custom elements in Polymer. You can you, you can expose 
properties or you can and, and you can also say that okay I want to import properties so these are the um, attributes I want to read from anyone who makes an instance of um, this element and you can also publish properties for others to use you can, there are also a few things that I'm not showing here like you can um, you can have vouchers for changes and uh, when when there is native support which is called uh, there is a method um, new in the DOM called object to observe to have watches it, it will use that otherwise it will have to prefill it just like everything else as usual there is a template and with the template we have a style and here um, although I'm using some uh, special polymer elements you notice these are these are just text boxes they're called paper inputs and that's why I said you probably will not agree with polymer on on these elements and how they look you probably want your own UI so although I'm using this, you notice I didn't have any special selectors in here, and that's because like you only you need this if you go if you dig inside the element itself into the shadow dome. But what's exposed to you, you can just deal with interact interactively easily. And then you just use use their stuff like you. Yeah, this is the the normal data binding that we saw in in their bit thing. The nice thing about this as well is, as I said is it's also um, two-way data binding so you you get that as well um, so this was pretty much the most important thing to, to see um, about polymer and uh, about web components of course that's not something that you'll be easily using today. Right now, the browser support in IE goes only to um, IE 10 in Firefox. Many features are still bully filled, and the problem with bully fields is that they're not as fast as native uh, behavior as well. Uh, so this is not really something that you'll probably be excited to work with today, although some people are working with very successfully. Uh, but uh, it's it's definitely, as I said, something that you're going to be using in five years. Maybe not with Polymer, but... Uh, in five years, there will be a new technology. <laughs> <laughs> it maybe be a little quicker than that, you reckon? <laughs> well, um, it, it depends on, on on how often we will get uh, uh, all, like, all the browsers, in particular IE, to be evergreen. Hopefully the new uh, Microsoft browser will be evergreen from day one, but how long it will take to get traction so we will see that I'm I'm expecting that like these, these sort of things move slow and, and and that's why as I said I don't know if polymer will, will stay for five years but web components sure like the, the whole web standards around web components that's that's what I think um, is is here to stay but framework polymer X tag whatever uh, probably not or may or maybe you know, like it's, it's very hard to tell about this um, also, like as you see, this this all new stuff, so it's very hard to get, like design patterns and uh, style guide and all this sort of stuff. When should I be using ABIs? When should I be like how how would I have two distinct components interact with each other? What was the right way to do messaging? These all things, um, because no one is is using this extensively enough to give us guidance it's still something that everyone's figuring it out so if you're playing with this you're figuring it out just like everyone else uh, which is also a, a good opportunity for learning for blog posts for videos for alternate presentations if you want to do <laughs> something like that so uh, there is definitely a lot to, to to say and to discover in in this area ahmed uh, and yeah we, we we don't know what's what's going to happen but sure like you know uh, Watch this area. Like this is the future. Maybe not as as we see it now, but this is definitely going to be like. So you're saying that it's not now, but you're saying there's a project that is using it. So. So I'm I'm saying that adoption now is is very small. So it can be used. So it can it can be used if you only care about IE10 or if you are um, willing to spend some time with um, IE9. So it's doable with IE9. With um, but you like you, you might have to go and you know fix some things and stuff like that. So uh, I think that like browser support is is a big problem for today. But given that in current stable Chrome all these features are existing, and I did all my 
demos except the last one with without the bully field and I tried the last one without the bully field in, in, in Chrome as well. So it's getting there. We're very close and some people are using it. So if your project is likely to um, be out in a year or two, this might be a good bit better than any other framework that you'd use. What is the quality of Polymer? Uh, for for the main components, the framework components, they seem very fine. Um, um, maybe, d d would, would you disagree with that, uh, Andrew or Ahmed? So it's, it's, it's it, like, for framework, Wise, it's, it's fine. I think for the UI stuff, you will probably have to uh, like fight it a bit. Yeah, they need a little bit of improvement with performance as well. There's like a really good 20 minute video where they you know, the state of play in Polymer. And they say, look, we've done well here, this area needs to work. And for the most part, yeah, optimization is uh, where they're spending their time. This, this still comes back to the bullet fields as well, yeah, like from a Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think yeah, at the moment it's like 0 0.52 is developer preview. There's a 0 0.8 uh, come like it's a branch. Obviously, you grab that and see like you know, they made a small like bar stuff. And they're looking at 0 0.9 sometime between the first quarter and second quarter, and then they're expecting more release, like stable release, uh, for about June, July. But whether you trust that or not, it's not. So being from Google, does this mean when they get to 1.3, they drop it? <laughs> <laughs> they start with T0. Yeah. <laughs> so actually, that's, um, that's, that's also an interesting thing. So um, g uh, speaking of that um, and around what's happening with uh, Google on 1.3 and uh, 2.0, I'd suggest you go to Googlestop.net and <laughs> <laughs> a random page <laughs> on the internet. Here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> And yeah, look for Angular 2.2. <laughs> <laughs> um, so th there is a video that explains that they didn't exactly do what everyone thought um, they're doing, which is just throw uh, one point takes into the trash bin and just make a new thing. It's not exactly the thing, so all the details can, can see it from there. Is this like Microsoft still supports Silverlight though? Uh, n no, no. Uh, so, like the the main thing for for this one is that like people say, okay, there will be no migration bus, and that's horrible. The, and what what the team was really saying, like, is that uh, we don't know what Angular 2.0 will look like yet. So we only when we know, then we we can have a migration bus because we know what to mi to migrate to what. Like, you know, but they're so not designing it in full migration from the start. No, like they, they they are waiting. Yeah, they they want like to agree on what it, it's going to look like because actually it's changing very rapidly. Like things like the syntax they used for their uh, attributes and stuff like that is is it, like there is a GitHub issue where it's completely changing, and it's just because like people didn't like it. So if you were building a project now, ignoring what, like your own personal site or something like that. Mm -hmm. And you wanted to do a Spa framework thing from the front end, would you do Angular? If it is going out in the short term, probably Angular. If it is going out in the long term, probably Polymer. Yeah. Um, so that's it. And, and and what's short term, long term? Um, less than a year okay. and a year and a year or two. Okay. So yeah, I, I would say that, that, that would be like the the thing. And anyway, I, I think that everything is going to be web components, regardless of Polymer or not. So Angular 2 will have web components. They talked about working with uh, Polymer and like using Polymer for their own, like for Angular, so that Angular be built on top of Polymer. But that was very early talk that they didn't uh, talk about it again, which is a tells me that I don't know what's happening in there. Um, and uh, Ember are also going to ha have war, uh, web components. Uh, uh, React.js have their own understanding or redefinition maybe of the word Shadow DOM. Uh, Aaron will be explaining uh, about that a lot, I guess. So. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I'm, I've got a question then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about the fact that Mozilla came out and said no, no web components? No web components. And Several times throughout this talk, you said it works fine in Chrome Stable. Isn't that the same as saying 
it works best in Chrome, which we did 10 years ago on the web. Okay. So, yeah, so, uh, so <laughs> actually, Mozilla is one of the main contributors of the web components polyfill. Actually, like the big two are Google and Mozilla. So they, they had their own XTag framework, which is similar to Polymer, and it had its own polyfill. And they said, okay, it doesn't make sense to have two polyfills, let's have one. There was one time when they, they had some support for a feature, I don't remember which, uh, probably custom elements or something, uh, template, yeah, I don't remember which feature, but there was one feature when they implemented, and then they, they took that implementation out and everyone freaked out. And they said, okay, they're not going to support web components. But what Mozilla really said is that it would be back, but after we synced over. So it looks like they have some problem with their performance implementation or something, and like it is, it is on the roadmap, but um, yeah, it's still not not there yet. A and they are still working on the polyfill as well. Like the polyfill is not just Google anymore. So hopefully this means something. And that might be another reason why like this is not happening now, but it's, it's happening like slow, but it's, it's happening. Uh, what about the fact that you keep saying that this works in Chrome stable, but it doesn't work anywhere else except uh, with polyfill. Yeah, so and how is that different to it works best in Netscape 4? Uh, that <laughs> you don't like you in that in, in these days you didn't have polyfills, I guess. Not proper polyfills, not not as today. Like I think so the polyfill I think what he's saying is if polyfills slow down performance, yes. then people are still gonna say it works best in Chrome. And yes. you're going to get sites that say you can't run this because you're not in Chrome. So yes, and that's, and, 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 and that's why it's not it's not for today, right? Like okay. it's it's not very good for for today work. So I'm I'm, I'm looking at can I use and I'm looking at Shadow DOM and it says no support for IE like, at all. No, it's on the IE features. Yeah, but like you the mentioned IE 10 that you get some. No, it's still with bullet well. Yeah. yeah. So that means you have to send the polyfills down to all the browsers anyway. Yes. Yeah. And and again, that's why so this is future centric. Team? Are they going to implement it? What it is? What it's it's yeah, on status IE. Yeah, it's yeah, it's status yeah. So I think it was a it's like a it's consideration. It's, it, it's okay. a big BR so point for them, so like they're okay. focusing on it from this side, mm -hmm. I think. How would I style my entire page? So um, you like. Although you, you cannot directly target the shadow DOM inside any custom element, but with with proper selectors, like this shadow selector I showed, you can target everything. And that's, that's, that's uh, you, he, here comes the guidance thing, right? Because people can abuse um, the features to be able to select everything, right? And um, we will definitely come to a point where people come to do this and don't do that. Um, right now, the easy word is only do this if you are doing some uh, generic theming for the entire site, this sort of thing. Otherwise, keep the styles in, in there. Actually, very interesting patterns are coming with this uh, HTML in both things. Things like, okay, put your styles and your scripts with your HTML. That's just crazy because you can put it all in one HTML file and you import this, right? So you might think, no, but this, this file will grow so big and it will be so ridiculous. But the answer is, this, this probably means that you want to split it into smaller components, right? In their own files. These things haven't emerged yet, but um, I'm sure they, they, they'll come soon. Like this will be, um, this will be the way you build everything. It's just like uh, when in AngularJS we say, okay, you make a directive for that. This, this will be the same way. And yeah, you, you can access it. It's, it's not forbidden. You just need to explicitly mention that you want to access it. Okay? Uh, I guess that's uh, good. Uh, we don't need to do uh, any questions. These are the two websites to <laughs> learn about. Been too hard, so. <laughs> uh, this have been too uh, like th These are the main websites to learn about this stuff. Uh, I'll be putting a few more links that I just didn't have time to prepare for them because I'm too lazy um, on my um, blog and I'll be posting them to the newsletter so if you subscribe to that you get it automatically or you'll see me uh, post them on Twitter. Uh, I, I said there are no questions but if you want to continue with questions let's get one more. Good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, thank you everyone. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.